This is a real caboose hostel. More specifically, it is the Squilax General Store and Hostel in the Shushwap region of British Columbia. And not only is the location on the river, but the cabooses are still in original condition as they were when working for CN Rail. It's not the steering wheel, but no. <laughs> I could pretend. Hi, Jess. So cool. <laughs> And we are staying here tonight. This, this is a train. It's actually a caboose hostel. Look at this. This is the Hosteling International Shushwap or the Squillax General Store and Hostel. And it's comprised of four CN Rail cabooses. Actually, three of them are for guests. And the one at the far end is for uh, staff here. I'm gonna show you inside. I'm gonna show you everything else they have here. The waterfront, because this is a hostel. So you can come stay here. I'm Mike, the channel's Downy Live. Ooh, let's get this one started. So because of COVID, they've reduced their office hours. So we knew that and they give you a phone number that you can call ahead. So yeah, they, they know we're coming. So we are in the Shushwap region of British Columbia, which is the houseboating capital of the world on the lake that we're on. This highway is Highway 1, also known as the Trans-Canada Highway. It's 7,800 kilometers long from the west coast going through all 10 provinces of Canada, ending up in the east coast. Unless you start in the east coast, then it comes all the way to the west coast. You know how highways work. They go both directions. On the side of the road is this cute little general store. It's the Squillax General Store and Hostel because the hostel is hidden down below behind the trees. It's normally a very cute stop on the side of the highway, so they've closed it. They wanted to discourage anyone from stopping to visit. That's why it's all boarded up. But Blair, the manager, came out, met us here, told us to drive around, park in behind, where she met us with gloves and a face mask so she could safely tell us everything about the hostel. And so speaking of that, let's go check it out. So because COVID has canceled all international travel, this has actually been a great opportunity for me to do a little road trip with my sister. She's an elementary school teacher, so she gets the summers off. And I do this for a living. I make these videos about interesting places to stay or riding trains, and this video is kind of a great combination of the two. So if you're new here and you're not subscribed, which you're likely not subscribed, click that subscribe button down below because it's free and you can always unsubscribe later. So I'm Mike, nice to meet you, and uh, let's keep this going because I have a lot to show you. So this is the general store, but the original location of the general store was further down the highway at the bridge where it actually burnt down in 1935, I think she said. And then they built this here in 1935. And then in the late 1980s, the owners wanted to retire and so they sold to Blair who now runs it. She bought four cabooses from CN Rail, from their used equipment branch. So one of them came from Montreal, one of them came from Edmonton. They all came to Kamloops, which is sort of a train hub here in British Columbia. And then she had them put on truck and trailer and then craned into position here. And they're actually on a railway. So she, she had train tracks built here so they could sit and they, they do sit all connected, the three of them. All three that are guest cabooses are named after national parks. So there's Yoho, there's Glacier, where I'm staying in tonight, and there is Revelstoke. There's, there's an on-site dog, but there's also an on-site llama. But he's, uh, he's feeling a little under the weather th today, she says, so normally you can have the chance to take him for a walk, but hopefully we can do that in the morning because today's, today's not the day for it. I found my family hanging out out front. So we actually have the whole place to ourselves tonight. So we have all the cabooses, our own picnic area. It's uh, my father, Rick, my mother, Allison, and my sister, Jessica, who I'm traveling with. So that's cabooseye, Mike. Cabooseye, cabooses, cabooses, plural. 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 It's like cactus, cacti, cabooseye, cabooseye, cabooseye. So my parents are doing a road trip in one direction and Jess and I are going in another way, but we decided to spend the night together here. One more thing to add from the outside before we go inside is they each have different colored chairs accommodating the, the caboose itself. So blue in that one, we have the red ones and the far ones are green. And the reason for that is they don't want you to share chairs while you're here during COVID. So you're welcome to move your chairs from your caboose wherever you'd like to sit, if it's on the dock or out here. Should we go check inside? 
So if you don't know, cabooses were used as the last car on a train, and this was for very long distance train trips going across North America, Canada, the United States, where the crew would stay, they'd be able to swap crew, so the new engineer or conductor would go to the front, the other would come to the back. It's also a place where they could keep an eye in case the train got separated, they could operate brakes. So it's kind of like a staff quarters for these really long distance trips. This caboose is pretty much untouched. As you can see right here, this is kind of like an operator's place. This is the air pressure of the air brakes and this lever here is the emergency stop on those air brakes. Yeah, it's got all these switches up here. I can just imagine what it was like. These actually have CN rail paperwork still inside them. Next to me here, of course, is a sort of a very small table and chairs, a dining area. On the other side of the door from where you come in, this is just a, a couch sitting area. You know, this is your relaxation area, so you want to have more than just your bed. But it is also a work area. Very interesting place. This was from the old oil heater. So it's been taken out here and replaced for an electric heater. As we continue through the caboose, we now have the kitchen. The kitchen here is still in the exact same place it was originally, that nothing has changed except that there was a water tank up here. And since the caboose has been modernized a little bit and is now has, now has plumbing essentially. So it's, it's the same layout, but it's been updated a little bit. Now, as we come through the kitchen, you're gonna see kind of the most iconic part of a caboose. It's this part. This is the part that is elevated above the train. So it's that little cap at the top of the caboose and it has seats for the operators to sit up there and it allows them to see ahead over top of the whole train. Look at this. Look at that win manual windshield wiper. Oh, that's so cool. And so yeah, you'd be looking ahead to see if it gets disconnected from the train. Then they can operate the brakes, you know, lock it down or radio to the front if there's a problem, whatever it is. So they would spend most of their shift sitting up here and just looking ahead. Cup holders, this is the dream. Oh, look, at, look at this, look at the details. Little clipboard right there for your paperwork, doing your job, taking care of business. So as you can see, we come through and we now have very standard basic bunk bed system where you could be you could be on a caboose for days out, out in the countryside. Maybe, maybe weeks, I literally don't know. Very easy to clean, sturdy bunk beds. This is a, a nice, like darker quarters, easier to sleep. We have the panels separating so no one's head is being kicked by someone else's feet. And, and this is kind of exactly what you want on a caboose. I'll admit, it's maybe not the vacation my parents thought they would get with Jess and I, but hey, this is what happens when I'm your son. Now, bathroom, kind of similar to what you'd expect on a boat. I don't know what they call a, a toilet on the train, but this is it. It has plumbing, it works, it's very clean, and I think they've done a great job. I think this is great. And as we come back outside, we can see the cabooses are interlocked with each other on the track below us. And here is the shower house and the kind of barbecue area just around the corner there. And if you're a real train fan, if you listen, that's, that's a train going past right now, so. It's real. Should we uh, go pick beds? Sure. <laughs> just like camp. Just yeah. like camp again. Yeah, you can tell they're gung-ho. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get the top. <laughs> well, no, uh, not if I beat top. you to it. Get the top. And I get the top up. Well, it looks like I'm going here then. Boys, Fun. Boys on one side, ladies on the other side. <laughs> Let's head to the water. Well, <laughs> you can almost hear it. And I've realized this, that they have these handles on the ceiling as if you were on a moving train and you didn't want to lose your balance, you could, you could grab on. Whoa. There's some party in here. 
right. Disco light. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Nice. I didn't get an invite Three, to the card game. Five. Good night, Mom. Good night, Mike. Good <laughs> night, Jess. Night, Johnny Live. Good night, Mike. Good night, Dad. Mike, this is so cool. Oh. We are you're oh. both up there. Oh, this yeah, is we're so having our cool. morning coffee. Oh, Cheers, right. Dad. Wonderful. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> that was great, Jess. Mm -hmm. How'd you sleep last night? I slept like a baby. I find the place not luxury but has all the basics. There's everything you need right here. Normally hostels are a great place to meet other people, share your travel stories, talk about other experiences, and this one actually happened to be empty, except for us. It just shows how much travel has been impacted by coronavirus, but also how safe it is at the same time. So this is the morning dining area, the kind of communal space that you come for pancake breakfast with real maple syrup, which is included, and all made by Blair here. So. This is our little introduction to Blair, who's Good been morning. the host and uh, been wonderful. I'm able to travel and meet up with my parents at this really cool place in a very safe way. I mean, the only other people that were here were Blair, who makes amazing pancakes, and Massey, the llama. Mm. We have our stayed in a CN Rail train last night, having our iconic Canadian breakfast, pancakes, mm -hmm. which they might have very well had on the caboose. Yeah. Pretty simple recipe. Good old flapper jack. Flapjacks and uh, a real Canadian maple syrup. And by real maple syrup, that means on the ingredients, it is only maple syrup. That's, it's just maple sap distilled. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. It's delicious. And the pancakes are blueberry and apricot with a little bit of rhubarb from the garden right here. Mm, just imagine. Yeah, it's so good. Anyway, what I'm saying is, don't be afraid to travel right now. Do your research, find out who's doing it safely and legally, like Hosteling International Canada is, which is why we chose here. We knew it would be a safe place to meet and a fun place to meet. Go explore something new in your neighborhood, in your, in your province, your state, wherever you are. Go try something new. This is, this is your shot. You can't go anywhere else. Have fun with it. And on that note, Jess and I are moving on to our next destination, staying at the Hosteling International Jasper and Lake Louise. We're gonna go see Canada's epic national parks. I don't say epic lately. They are iconic, legendary. Look at this water. Look at these mountains. I got lucky with my family here too. Hey, Mikey. So that's all in next week's video. This is the end of this video. I'm Mike, the channel's Downy Live. I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me.